Today I wanted to talk about uh, self-sabotage. Good morning, Deborah. Morning, Deborah. You all look great, full of energy. That's always good. Thank you, Deborah. We like that for a Thursday. Yes. Um, I want to talk about self-sabotage today. And um, obviously self-sabotage is something that's a much bigger topic than I can cover today. And it includes a lot more than just health and diet and the way you eat. Um, exercise. Um, it's something that I work with with my executive clients. It's something I work with with business owners. Um, across the board, I think self-sabotage is something that we as humans um, engage in. Do, yes. And um, I actually, we were running a little, a couple minutes behind today because I was looking at my notes. Uh, I have a lot of notes about self-sabotage because it's something that I work with a lot of clients on. And I was trying to figure out how do I condense this into something that I can share that you can find useful in your health journey? So um, I've, I've done my best to try and to do that, to kind of give you some, some ideas, help you recognize self-sabotage, and then to uh, kind of combat it a little bit. Start I guess I'm gonna be listening today. <laughs> do you have anything you wanna say about no, self-sabotage? If I have comments, I'll go ahead and give my two cents. Okay, so the first thing about self-sabotage is what is it? And that is when you have a goal or you have something you want to achieve, but then you actively or unconsciously do things that keep you from achieving it. Um, the easiest examples to give you are things like um, for addiction, because that's a really big picture. So people who are addicted to something, and it might be cheese, but we won't mention that. <laughs> um, people who are addicted to a drug or an alcohol situation will self-sabotage them, themselves in ways like, well, you know, one time won't hurt, or hanging out with this friend won't hurt, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, doing this thing that I used to do, but I won't, I won't do the drugs, you know, won't hurt. Hey, Valerie. Good morning, Valerie. It's good to see you. So, you know, kind of those little tiny decisions that you make that, oh, it won't matter. And then you end up doing more than you thought or something you didn't mean to. Um, like, for example, I know when, when people are trying to drink less, they're like, oh, I'll just go to the bar and have one drink. And then all of a sudden it's three in the morning and they, they you know, they've been drinking all night. And that's one that's really common with self-sabotage. Um, friends make it really easy to self-sabotage. And that's true in eating, too. I think friends, uh, even family, will help you self-sabotage by accident. Like, I don't yes. think it's their intention to do yeah, it. Yeah, they are malicious. I mean, you yeah. know, and I can just think of, like, you know, when I used to diet for bodybuilding, my mom would be like, oh, you can, she'll make something that I can't possibly eat because I'm on a strict diet for a show, but you can eat this. Come on, you can certainly eat that. And that's because they made something they want to share it with you, something mm -hmm. that they think is good, and they don't understand the ramifications of you doing that. And I think that's, that's an extreme because I was bodybuilding, but I think that happens, you know, if you go visit um, family on the holidays and you tell them you're whole food plant-based or you're a vegan or you're a vegetarian, they're going to try to get you to eat something that's not because they think or they're concerned that you're not healthy or concerned that something. Or they want, the, uh, another one is when they, because they want you to be happy. Right. And well, they yes. feel like, Happy's, how could you possibly be happy? Happiness has a lot to do with it. I think actually. it does. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they, a lot of people uh, correlate happiness with eating food, eating bad food. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, my whole life, people have said to me, oh, you're thin. You don't have to worry about what you eat. And I've actually said on more than one occasion in my life, no, I am thin because I think about what I eat. Exactly. Like they, they have the cart before the horse. And I think that that happens a lot with people is, oh, you always eat so healthy. You sure you can have whatever this thing yeah. is that's, that you right. would rather not eat. A little bit won't hurt you. Right. But a little bit a lot of times. And then you end, well, a little bit a lot of times, or you end up on that slippery slope where your taste buds get readjusted to the standard American diet and, oh, it's just a little bit. So that those are things that you see with, with self-sabotage is that, you know, you put yourself in a situation where you your friends family are, are helping you along with that. So that, that's something to and consider. And not, malici not maliciously, just... Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. are there situations where people maliciously don't want you to be healthy? Possibly. Yeah, some people like to have but share I think, misery. So. I think mostly people are um, trying, to, trying to make sure you're happy. I right. think that that's what their biggest concern is your happiness. Mm -hmm. And so then the, the question that I ask people, and this is true whether I'm working with people about their health or their financial success or their business success, regardless, across the board, the question I ask is, what is the voice in your head telling you? What, what, is, that, what is that chirpy little thing? What are they saying? And do you believe them? I think that that's a big thing too. Yes. Is that and what I've done and what I recommend my clients do, and you're going to laugh, but trust me, it works. Is give that voice a name. 
And mine happens to be named Harriet. That's her, that's the name she's had for 25 years. And I gave her a name because then I can tell her, shut up. <laughs> you are not welcome here. Be quiet. And you know what? She's part of me. And I get that. And so I, I always say to her, you are along on this journey and that's fine. And you are allowed to voice your opinion, even though it's wrong. But you have to sit in the back seat. You cannot drive. Mm. And I think that that's an important thing when it comes to self-sabotage is we have to recognize that part of our our consciousness, our brain, whatever it is, however you want to label that, and be able to say, okay, yes, this is part of who I am, but that doesn't mean I have to let it drive my decisions. And catching it means noticing that it's happening. And I think a lot of, for a lot of people, um, they don't even recognize it's happening and where it comes from. I know for me, my mother was always very concerned about my safety and that I would be happy and successful. And so she would say things to me like, maybe you shouldn't try that. Maybe you mm. won't be able to do it. And she didn't mean it in a bad way. It's their fear of failure. It's right. not your fear of failure. Right. And so, you know, that they relate. I mean, that's, that's happened in my life continuously. And I mean, and I've, I've had clients say that they have people who tell them, oh, you should not try to eat plant-based. You're going to fail at that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. That's helpful. Right. And so, you know, being able to recognize, you know, how much of the stuff you're carrying that is your inner voice, that is your self-saboteur, is something someone else said to you. It's not even your stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I can't help you unpack that on a Facebook Live, yes. but if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one session, I can help you start to unpack that. Absolutely. Right, right. And it, Go ahead. I was just saying, the thing is, we're all, we've all experienced the moment where we're working with our own our internal demons like as far as on the edge of, of just saying oh, I can't right you know and you're always pushing back hopefully against that mm -hmm. and so sometimes it just takes that one person or that one nudge to get you just to give in right know? to just give up because right. you were already fighting it yes, and then they just fighting. pushed you over yeah exactly. exactly and I think that the thing we have to pay attention to is when your inner voice starts saying these things to you do you agree with them like, do you agree with what your inner voice is saying? Like, if maybe you, you do give in, maybe you find yourself in a situation and you eat something you shouldn't or you don't exercise or whatever it is, whatever story you have going on. And then, oh, yeah, well, you're always like that. Of course you fail. Why wouldn't you fail? And you go on this, like, tangent of just really negative things. You, you have to... You have to notice that. But the other side of it, and this is a big one that, other, that people don't even realize they do, is that when you do succeed... Does that voice poo-poo it? Right. Like you do something well, you have a really good day, you eat really well, the whole day you eat whole food plant-based, whatever it is, whatever your goals are, you have a great day, and at the end of the day your inner voice is like, yeah, well, that was a fluke. That'll never happen again. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So instead of, instead of patting yourself on the back and saying, good job, can't wait for tomorrow to continue. Right. Yeah, you do the opposite. So your inner voice kind of is... is Two, twofold, where one, they're constantly telling you you'll, you'll fail anyway, and then when you do succeed, they're like, ah, that, that was just luck, that'll never happen again. So you have to kind of catch that, that thing. And then I, I have a note here again, notice the irrelevant decisions that you make. And I have irrelevant in, in quotes. And that's because, again, who are you hanging out with? Who, whose voice are you allowing into your head? Who are you talking to? Are the people that are around you um, helpful or hurtful? And decisions like, oh, you know, I'll bring this in the house for my son or my daughter or my husband or my spouse or whatever the story is, and then you know good and well you're going to eat it. It feels mm -hmm. like an irrelevant decision, but then it's not. It, it turns, turns out not to be. Yeah. yeah, so that that's a problem. Um, another self-sabotage issue is what I call the chicken-egg situation, whereas people say, um, I'll talk better to myself when I'm more successful. Well, you'll never get more successful if your voice in your head is constantly giving you negative stuff and, and it's sabotaging your success. Mm -hmm. So notice that. Like, do you have an if-then statement around your health and eating well and exercising or, or succeeding or whatever it looks like? Is there an if-then statement there? If there is, that's something that you, um, you need to work on, need to figure out. Well, what is, why do I have this if-then statement and how, yeah. do I, how do I fix it? How do I change it? Um, other things that people say, these are, these are ones I've, I've, I hear, so I thought I'd share them with you. Um, I exercised today, so I earned this yeah. pizza. <laughs> you know, I hear that a lot as well. What, and we, we've seen people in the gym yep. who say, well, I come to the gym so I can eat what I want to. Right. And, and you can look at them and be like, you need to stop eating what you well, want there's, to. There's the one guy, if he weighs a pound, he weighs 300. I mean, he weighs, you know. He's a big man. Over 300 pounds. He's a big yeah, man. That's what he says. He says, I come to the gym so I can eat whatever I want. 
And I want to say to him so badly, no, actually, that's not true. That's not working for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... We, and we've talked before about how you can't out exercise a bad diet. You like can't. you just and I mean we couldn't out exercise a reasonably not right. horrible diet mm-hmm. prior to switching this exactly. way. We were both, you know, gaining weight and we were both our cholesterol was going up and we were trying. So that that's a story people tell, but it's not true. Mm-hmm. So um Another one, I deserve X, Y, Z because I'm stressed. I had a bad day. You know, we see that with, I see that with cigarette smokers. When I work with clients who are cigarette smokers. Um, Well, I had, I had a bad day. When I get over this part of my life, you know, then I'll be able to quit smoking. Um, Whatever. So that story about, well, I deserve this because of that. Um, If you're making justifications for bad behavior, obviously um, that's a self-sabotaging behavior and and catching it noticing it and then changing it are the really hard things to do. And that's something I can't get into on, um, on a Facebook live, but definitely something to consider. Um, we talked before about if you're, how you eat or how you feel about yourself is connected to the scale. So, you know, I lost a few pounds. So today I deserve, or I gained a few pounds. So it's all worthless. I may as well not bother. Yeah. Either like, way you're going to eat. Either way you're eating. You so that's like that. probably not preferable. Yeah. So that's a self-sabotaging behavior, you know, having your um, emotional state being connected to the scale, something to to consider and to think about. Um, I just need, oh, this is another one. I had to, I was like, what did my notes say? Um, I just need to eat healthy until. And so we see that, especially with women who are getting married or, you know, if you're the mother of the bride or you have a vacation coming up, oh, I just need to be healthy until whatever this is and I'll lose the weight or I'll do this or that or whatever that thing is. But that is a very self-sabotaging behavior because your subconscious is like, well, at, then at that point, we're just going to give up. So why bother? Right. Well, yes, yes. Not only it's also sabotaging to the point where you've convinced yourself that once you reach that goal, then you can eat whatever you want. So it's a double. Right. You know, exactly. It's a double sabotage. And, and, and it can either you, some people do lose weight, reach that goal and then gain it all back. So mm-hmm. that's a yo-yo. And then some people, because they um, have set themselves up for this failure, don't end up losing the weight, but they reach that goal and then they're so disappointed in themselves, they gain weight. Mm-hmm. So um, those kind of things of having these, well, only until is, is a good way to self-sabotage yourself. Right. So be aware for, for those things. Um, another one, and this sounds funny to say it, but are you afraid of succeeding? Like what, what story are you telling yourself about succeeding? Is it something where it's like, well, there's no point in my starting eating healthy because I don't want to do it my whole life. And then I'll have to, you know, if I, if I start eating that way, I'll feel responsible for eating that way my whole life. And that's going to make me unhappy. And like, what story are you telling yourself about success? Um, you know, what would be different, either good or bad, if you succeeded, you know, if you lost all the weight, are you concerned about what your family will think about you? Are you concerned about what people, you know, I, a lot of, this is a, a woman thing, I think. I've, I've not had a man say this to me, but maybe they do. But I've had women say, well, if I lose weight, then I'm going to have to deal with like sexual harassment and men bothering me, and I don't want to deal with that. Um, I, I know people who have had sexual trauma in their past, and they protect them. They feel like their weight is protecting them. Hmm. And so then they're, they're afraid to lose it because, well, then, you know, I was skinnier when X, Y, Z happened to me. And if I get thin and healthy again, then, you know, it, it'll happen again. And obviously, those are some really big demons. And I, there's no way I can exercise them. But that's something to think about. Do you have fear of success? Do you have something you're carrying that says, yes, I want to do this, but then that, that's, that's going to create some a self-sabotage, self-sabotage situation. And then the, the question that I do ask when, I, when something like that comes up is, okay, let's, let's write it out. Let's talk about, if you succeed, let's really get it out. There's a, a psychology term called catastrophication, which is literally taking the situation to its fullest what-if catastrophe disaster. Like, if this happened, then this whole huge thing. And get it out of your head. I've talked before about how having stuff swirl around in your brain uh, creates so much stress, whereas if you can get it out of your head, whether you you write it down or you type it or you talk it into a recorder or whatever it is for you, but get it out of your head where your logical brain, your prefrontal cortex can actually see it, then you have the opportunity to say, okay, well, if that were to happen, I would fix it, or that would never happen, that's ridiculous. But if you just allow it to a swirl in your emotional brain, where it's not actually in words, it's just emotions, your logical brain has no way of even addressing it. Like it can't, 
it has there is just this nebulous mess and your emo, your emotional brain is all freaking out and your logical brain's like yeah I can't do anything with that give me some words mm -hmm. So if you get it out of your brain, um, it's going to help you a whole lot because that's going to give your logical brain a chance to, uh, to actually work on it for you. Now, obviously, this is a really uh, deep subject. It's not something that you're going to solve uh, by listening to me for you know, 15 minutes today. But if you're interested in working through you know, some of your self-sabotaging behavior and some of these demons, we all have them. I have them. I, you know, I regularly, that's why my... My inner voice has a name because sometimes she has lots to say and I have to tell her to be quiet. Um, but if you're interested in working on this, absolutely book some time with me. I'm happy to have um, some conversations with you and, and help you get on the path to dealing with your self-sabotage. Do you have anything you wanted to I add don't. about that? I don't. Mean, I think you said it all. Okay. Well, I certainly didn't say it all. Well, I could talk well, about this for days. You certainly said days. a lot more than I could. Hey, Deborah. Subject. hope you and Russ have a great day. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Deborah. I think that's it. Is that all you got? That's all it. right. Say goodbye, Gracie. Bye, Gracie. And for everybody else, we'll say, have a great day. And with that, we'll say, eat real food. Mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.